Well, thank you so much for tuning in to After the Whistle. I'm your host, Asher Daniel. My two guests, Edmund Aktibu and Steve Mushi, a little under the weather. So I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, go with the program by myself. Uh, we have some topics to cover today. But our main focus right now will be the uh, Assyrian night with the Chicago Bulls and the Charlotte Hornets. It was a fun night. Um, the outcome we would hope would be a little bit better. Unfortunately, some uh, Syrians, you know, due to some you know, changes in the day that they didn't, the expectations wasn't what we expected. But you know what? It's a learning curve. Um, hopefully in the next sporting event, there'll be a better outcome. But you know what? There are many that were out there. Uh, I think more sporadic in the stadium itself. Uh, future going, hopefully, on our next sporting events, we're trying to get one section for all the Assyrians to be at. That way, you know, the cameras will be on us more. So, but you know what? It was a fun night regardless. We supported our community. We represented our Assyrian culture with our flags. Uh, we'll show you some more highlights as we speak. Again, nonetheless, it was a great night. Uh, somewhat of an outcome we wanted to have a, a better outcome, I want to say. Um, again, in the near future, it is a learning curve. We learn from this, and we move on uh, to better ventures, to better sporting events. So this is something we have never done before. And hopefully, in the next sporting event, it will be a lot better. Let's show you some more video footage and some more highlights. We'll be right back. Well, like I said, it was a great night. Um, hopefully we'll do something like this again in the next event. Uh, we'll put something together. 
Um, I'm looking into possibly getting the Chicago Fire versus um, the was it the uh, uh, Houston Dynamo. So we'll work something out. I know there's a lot of Syrian soccer fans out there. We're trying to get our show down there too and go from there. So let's go ahead and discuss the MLB right now. Uh, again, this is an open topic, guys. If you have anything to say, you know, I will mention your name out here and kind of look at you know, what, your, what your question is. Or even if you have a debate regarding what we're talking about, feel free to share it and we'll continue from there. The Cubs, um, with the Chicago Cubs, you know, they, had a, they played the Milwaukee Brewers who were in first place. You know, coming into the Milwaukee Brewers were hot. They just had beaten the San Diego Padres. They actually swept them in San Diego. The Chicago Cubs went in there without Anthony Rizzo, who's got, seems like have back problems going on right now. But, you know, there was a moment in, I believe it was game two, where Javier Baez, who, you know, thank God he's okay, because it was a very dangerous play. Javier Baez hit what seemed to be a double, and the outfielder for the Milwaukee Brewers missed the ball. So when he caught the ball, Javier Baez started rounding third, or rounding second to go to third, diving into third base, his helmet came off, and we've seen what happened to be it was a ball hit him on the back of his head. So, you know, it was a moment that was scary. He seemed like he shook it off when the uh, third baseman missed the ball itself and rounded home and scored, which seemed to be, we thought at that point, was an infield home run, in the ballpark home run, but it wasn't. It was an error on the Milwaukee Brewers. I haven't seen something like that. Again, if, if you haven't watched it, you know, here's, here's a picture of here showing it what happened. The ball hit Javier on the back of the head. And, you know, this is, if you know what a, how a baseball feels, it's not, it's like a rock. So, I mean, this thing got pelted on the back of his head. I honestly was shocked that he got up from there and scored, which seemed to be okay, but it looks like they kind of um, gave Javier Baez a, a concussion protocol. He might have passed it. So, all good, you know, scary moment, but, you know, even though they lost that game, they still took three out of four. You know, now, you know, it was supposed to be an open night for the Chicago Cubs today, but, you know, we saw the snow in Chicago, so they had to postpone it to, for tomorrow. So how baseball works is whenever there's a team that has an opening day, they always have the next day off because of moments like this. We don't know if it's going to be postponed or not. In a situation like this, the game got postponed, so now they're playing tomorrow as their home opener. So if you had your tickets for tonight, you know, you're going tomorrow as the opener. The people that might have called off, well, you got to call off again uh, from work. But, you know, all in all, uh, it should be a fun night tomorrow. So on to Anthony Rizzo. Anthony Rizzo has been placed on a 10-day DL. You know, back problems to what magnitude, we don't know. Um, we'll see what happens. He's supposed to be back uh, shortly after that, uh, hopefully next week. Uh, again, if you have any questions, please feel free to shout them out uh, on, my, on the messenger here. I'll be more than willing to answer any of your questions. So let's kind of take a look at uh, the NL, score, NL standings right now for the uh, NL Central to show you where the Cubs land, where in the second place and Brewers are still in first. Okay, so, you know, you got Cubs that are starting to get warmer. And, you know, in most times with baseball, obviously, you know, it's colder, so the players aren't hitting as much. But once this, you know, once, these, once the temperature gets, starts getting warmer, you're going to see a lot of more hitting. Uh, the pitching has been pretty much uh, dead on from what I've seen. Yu Darvish has been pretty good. Jose Quintana actually himself has pitched a great game. He pitched a 3 to nothing outing against the Brewers. So, I'm actually, even the bullpen has been pretty consistent. I'm actually very thrilled to what I'm seeing right now. It's a young season. It is a very young season. Um, let's get the hitting in here. Once it starts getting warmer, you know, the Cubs are, Cubs are going to look very good. Uh, again, it's early, but let's go ahead and get the uh, first place, which surprisingly right now it's the Pittsburgh Pirates at a 7-1 record. You know, but we've seen that happen in many years where you know, teams like the Pirates or the Reds you know, they're competing throughout the half of the season, but they dwindle, you know, with, with whatever it is, if it's injuries or not. So the Cubs are looking promising, and we'll go from there and see what happens. 
Any questions with their Cubs, again, any questions with any topics, feel free to shout them out. I'm here. You know, I'll answer any of your questions. I'll mention your name out there, too. So let's go on to the NBA, okay? Kyrie Irving is out for the season. This is something to me where it's like, wow, what happens at this point with Kyrie Irving? I know Steve Mushi is a guru to it comes to basketball. Steve, if you're watching, I know you are watching. What do you think is going to happen with Kyrie Irving? If you have any questions, if you want to feel free to, you know, mention or even touch base with me during, um, I know you're under the weather, but, you know, some of these fans out here who are basketball fans want to know, what did Celtics do at this point? Who carries the load now with Kyrie Irving out? With it? these two screws that are being removed from his uh, leg. What happens now? He's out for the season. He should be back next year during the camp. This is a team that kind of came in, coming in with Kyrie Irving. We're supposed to have big expectations in the playoffs. What's going to happen with them? Is it uh, who is the next person who carries them? You know, now it looks like it's going to be Golden State. It's going to be the Houston Rockets. It's also going to be, obviously, you know, with, with um, the Cleveland Cavaliers. They're always going to be there and there with LeBron James. But the, 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 the Boston Celtics really relied on Kyrie Irving. Him being out is kind of a, it's almost like you're saying Tom Brady is out for the rest of the season with the Patriots. That kind of dwindles what their expectations are. So it, it's, it's unfortunate. Um, best of luck to him. I really had high hopes. I thought the Celtics might have been in, in the, uh, in the uh, playoffs and chasing that finals for the championship, but he's out. So, you know, it's, it's unexpected, but we'll see what happens, and we'll go from there with that one situation too. You know, do I still think it's probably going to be the Houston Rockets winning the NBA because they look dead on right now. Um, I don't want to see LeBron James win it because I just want to see what happens in the offseason. Is he going to go to another team? Um, it's going to be pretty interesting to see. The next thing I want to touch base is, is the uh, free agency uh, well, actually, not free agency, even the NBA draft. You know, there are some good names out there in the, in the college ranks, but this guy stands out, came out of nowhere. I kind of read about him the other day. His name is Luke Danici, if I'm pronouncing it correct. He's a uh, Slovenian star, okay, from, uh, from uh, the Europe League, and he's only 19 years old, and his stock is only rising to come in the first draft pick. Okay, so Steve's saying, I don't see the Celtics winning the first round. They have to work with all the young talent they have, Jalen Brown, Al Hartford, etc. Celtics uh, need a good defensive team, but without Kyrie Irving, Gordon Hayward, they will not come out of the East. I agree, Steve. Um, I believe, you know, Kyrie is kind of their heartbeat, you know, per se. And, and you know, that, maybe not this year. Maybe they got to build a more around Kyrie Irving. Um, but putting that team together, hopefully next year, you know, who's to say? I don't know, Steve. Are you saying that Kyrie Irving, even if he was playing, they might have not gone that far? Or th at this point, even without him there now, they're going to be out the first round. I agree. Kyrie Irving is the heartbeat right now with that team. We saw what he did with the Cleveland Cavaliers because I believe he was the heartbeat with the Cleveland Cavaliers. He did all the dirty work. He was doing all the scoring. I know LeBron James did a lot too, but he was the epitome of Cleveland. And that's why he left because he wanted to have his name for himself. You know, so who knows? But going back to Luke, uh, out of Europe, he's 19 years old. He's going to be, he's chasing for the first round pick in the NBA draft. So he's making a name for himself. Uh, Steve, if you know anything about that, can Kyrie contend without him? Uh, they are done. Yeah, I agree, Steve. I agree. It, it's it's going to be really tough. It's going to be extremely tough. So, um, you know, the NBA, it, it's a touchy subject. We'll see what happens actually with the draft, you know, because there's a lot of teams out there, you know, who's going to be fighting for that number one pick. So it's going to be interesting to see. You know, the Chicago Bulls were kind of flirting with that number one pick, but the NBA, you know, told them, you got to start playing with your draft picks or you got to start playing your, your starters or, you know, they started understanding that. But you know what? The, as the Bulls themselves, they should have realized, hey, play your starters, but, you know, they don't have to score. You know, you, you kind of, you know, there's a great area with that. You, can, you have to kind of go with how, how they're playing and, and you put your starters out there. You, don't, you know, you can just let the players know. Don't score their points and just lose. You know, what's the NBA going to say? You're playing your starters. So who's to say? It is a lottery, Steve. You're totally right. Um, and we've seen it where the Bulls got lucky and got Derrick Rose off, off a lucky bounce in the lottery. You know, it'll be an interesting uh, offseason this year. 
Uh, the Bulls, honestly, for what they have as far as the team itself, can make some, some great moves on this offseason. Um, they have the cash, I believe. Because, honestly, there's a lot of players with this team. Like, I'm looking. I was at the Bulls game against the Charlotte Hornets. I'm looking at these players. I'm like, who are these players? You know, they can they score. They can score. They're, they're in every game until, like, the last four or five minutes. So we'll see what happens. Let's take a quick uh, timeout commercial break. Um, and come back to you discussing FIFA. This commercial break brought to you by uh, J. Thomas Painting. Uh, I thank you so much for your sponsorship um, for this uh, commercial break. J. Thomas Painting, he is great at what he does. Um, he does all the paintings for anything you want inside the house. Um, he does drywall work too. So thank you so much for your sponsorship. J. Thomas Painting, uh, sponsorship guy, this commercial break. We'll come back and we'll discuss some FIFA. Can you blow my whistle, baby, whistle, baby, let me know. Girl, I'm gonna show you how to do it and we start real slow. You just put your lips together and you come real close. Can you blow my whistle, baby, whistle, baby, here we go. And I'm betting you like girls to give love to girls and stroke your little ego. I bet you I'm guilty, your honor. That's just how we live in my genre. Who in the hell don't pay the road wider? There's only one blow and one rider. I'm a damn shame, order more champagne. Pull a damn hamstring, trying to put it on ya. Let your lips spin back around, come up. Slow it down, baby, take a look. Blow my whistle, baby, whistle, baby, let me know. Girl, I'm gonna show you how to do it and we start real So well, thank you so much again um, for tuning in with After the Whistle. I'm your host, Asha Daniel. Again, thank you so much for our sponsorship from J. Thomas Painting. Um, you know, I, we appreciate that. He does phenomenal work uh, for all your needs, all your painting needs, all your, you know, anything that you need as far as drywalls. Contact him for uh, some free estimates. You saw his number that was listed there. So let's move on to the NFL. Okay, the, what's making headlines right now in the NFL is Trevor, da Trevor, Trevor Davis of the Green Bay Packers the wide receiver, okay, Trevor Davis was arrested, uh, arrested in LAX airport um, Sunday night for making, supposedly what was considered, he was joking around, but he was making uh, bomb threats in the airport. Now, you know, as, you know, we've touched base with many of these players, um, with my host, with my guests like Steve. You know, we had a situation with um, Odell Beckham Jr. when he was caught in the video. You know, here's another situation. You know, you're in LAX airport. You know, you, you consider that as a joke. You're making bomb threats. Obviously, he was arrested. His court date is May 5th. You know, you're going to sit there and say you're joking about a bomb threat in LA airport, especially LA, okay? It's one of the biggest airports next to Chicago. Who makes bomb threats? You're a, prof you're a talented professional player, okay? If you're trying to make a 15-minute fame for yourself, you play in the NFL. What, what are you doing with your situation right now? You know, it just by itself, you know this is going to happen. What's going to happen is Green Bay is going to release this player. There's no way. Uh, I mean, if I was, you know, the owner, if I was the GM, you know, the Green Bay Packers, there's no way you allow this player on your team. There is absolutely no way. Uh, you know, a player to his caliber too. It's not like you're saying he's a phenomenal player. Where, where, you know, yeah, maybe they can brush this under the table. You're a wide receiver. You know, may, trying to make this team. 
So you could probably say goodbye to your career. I mean, I don't know who's going to accept you after this, after this move. Uh, very selfish. What possesses you to do something like that? You know, I wonder, again, you know, what, what do these players think? Uh, are they educ? I mean, it seems like where's the education level? You know, you got he's traveling. I don't know if he's traveling by himself. Why would you say something that dumb? You know, the, you know, a bomb threat in L.A. is be, is beyond in any airport is it's stupid. You know, what are you thinking? You blow the whistle on this. You know, I blow the whistle on this. What are you thinking? Good luck for your career. You're you're, you're not going to make anywhere. Any team's going to accept you. And I know for a fact, I, if if Green Bay doesn't release this player, it's beyond. It's stupid. You know, it is. Not, I mean, I agree, Albert. Um, it's not a joke with everything that's going on politically, especially. You know, what do you do? You know, it, it's pretty stupid. Albert Montero, thanks. thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, he, Albert's saying it's not a joke with everything that's going on. It's not. You know, political-wise, especially, look, we had 9-11, okay? Especially what's going on in Europe, all the, the killings that's going on. Why would you say something that's stupid? Why? You know, it makes no, absolutely no sense to do something like that. You know, but it seems like this is something every other week, every month, something is coming up. You know, there's a player refusing to do this. There's a player getting arrested over here. There's a player doing a video over here. You guys are getting paid millions of dollars, okay? This guy, you know, who's to say he's probably making the league minimum? You know, I, honestly, Trevor Davis, you know, what are you thinking? Honestly, what are you thinking? It's exactly, Albert, especially in L.A., you got New York, you got Chicago, you got LA, three of the biggest airports. What are you thinking? Now he's going to Hawaii. Good luck with that. That's not going to happen. So, very dumb move. Uh, the next thing I was going to say, you know, obviously, was Odell actually made the, um, is in practice. Uh, Odell Beckham Jr. did report to the Giants. So, who's to say? I mean, he still had the contract negotiations, still hasn't been there. But we'll see what happens. But, you know, going back to Green Bay, Trevor, that was very, very dumb. You know, you blow the whistle on that one. So um, on to the next topic I'm going to discuss is the NHL, um, one of the near and dear of the Blackhawks faithful. Uh, Patrick Sharp um, said goodbye on the, uh, yesterday in his, last, or in his last game as a Blackhawk, ending the season. Patrick Sharp, I want to kind of tell you guys who are Hawks fans, or who don't know much about the Blackhawks or NHL. Patrick Sharp was traded by the Philadelphia Flyers in 2005, 2000, um, 2005 season. Didn't make the roster until 2007, 2008. He was at the Chicago Cup. He was the, actually the first part of the core. He was the original core before Keith Sharp, Seabrook, Taze, and Kane came along. Uh, Patrick Sharp came in with the Blackhawks in 2000, 2007, 2008. Um, prior to them actually making some noise prior to them actually even winning the cup in 2009, 2010. He was there for the first three cups. Uh, a phenomenal player off and on, on and off the ice. You know, did a lot of uh, charity work. Probably one of the nicest guy on the ice. Um, it was sad to see him wave uh, goodbye uh, to see him. You know, it, it, knowing that I saw him when he came into the league and see him and you know, it makes me look like, oh my God, I feel so old, but you know, he's retiring. It just kind of make, it's, makes you sad because here's the end of a chapter, a chapter that just, you know, started in 2007, you know, right before that big rush came along, before they started making, you know, before they had a contract with WGN. Um, it, it's, it's pretty sad. So Patrick Sharp retires, waves goodbye to the crowd. Um, it's a sad ending. So let's show some footage of him saying goodbye in his last game and ending the season with the Chicago Blackhawks at the season end of their last game also. How fitting was that? Let's show you some highlights, and we'll be right back. And this will be his last game at the end Look, of the season. Nobody want, nobody's going to leave. The uh, teammates won't go in the locker room. They're going to make him uh, take a victory <laughs> lap. Look at that. That's awesome. with that though let me just continue NHL okay. well thanks so much for tuning in it was a very sad moment um, it was very emotional for me to see him wave goodbye because I feel like there's more players 
right around the corner that's going to be saying goodbye too. Um, you know what? The Blackhawks have a lot of cash to play with this year, Unfor- like unlike other years where they had to kind of release players to stay within the cap. You know, what's going to happen to Hosa? I think they buy him out. You know, the, the, the news came on with Hosa saying he's still in the condition he's in. So he might not even play next year. So what do the Hawks do? You know, Sharp's off the books. A um, few other players might also be off the books that were rental players. Um, Hosa's situation, he's making $12 million, okay? In his situation, you buy his contract out, then you got another $12 million to free up. One guy, or actually I don't want to say one guy, two guys I'm seeing that might benefit from this is, okay, they've retired. I've kind of pursued, go after the Sedin brothers. Yeah, they've retired. You know what? A lot of people don't like them, especially because they play for Vancouver, Vancouver. But these are the type of two players that are two-way players. Their chemistry together is phenomenal. I mean, they, I mean, you put these two Sedin brothers, if you can talk them out of retirement, bring them to the Chicago Blackhawks. Imagine them with Taves in the front line, the first line. You got Taves centering with Henrik Sedin on the left and Daniel Sedin on the right. They, their passing skills along with Taves, I mean, they'd be one of the best lines in the NHL. Then you have, then you have uh, Patrick Kane and uh, the two other two, like Hannah Stroza uh, on the second line with them. They have two, three rolling lines with the Chicago Blackhawks. Keep that team together. If you can bring the Sedins out of retirement and bring them to Chicago, I think they would benefit from that. They could win the cup again. They'll be the talk of the Stanley Cup. And why not? The Sedins never seen a cup. You know, they've been, they, dra- they got drafted by Vancouver in 1999. Why not bring them in? You know, that would be something, you know, worth kind of flirting with. If you can bring them to Chicago, this is something that would be very good for the organization. It'd be, you know, they, they'd put them right at the echelon of winning the cup again. Do it. If you want to fill in more seats, not saying that they're not going to selling out, but they will be the talk of the town. So let's go on, on to FIFA right now, something that's coming right around in June. FIFA soccer. Okay. Um, every four years, you know, if FIFA comes around, and you wonder what's, who, what's going to happen, who's going to... The teams that's always proclaiming themselves about winning the cup, it's usually Germany, Brazil, okay, France, Italy, and Spain. You know, they're, they're always a talk of winning the cup. What's sad is Italy is not in this World Cup. What saddens me is that's my favorite team. Italy, USA, they're not, they didn't make the cup either, but you know what, that's USA, you know... Even them making the World Cup, you've never seen them pass a second or third round. But Italy is more of a shocker to me because as long as I've known, okay, well, yeah, Albert just tuned in with us right now. Albert just mentioned Hawks will be back playoffs next year. I do. I agree. And, yeah, Argentina, Albert, thank you for mentioning that. Argentina is also one of the teams that's also fighting for the Cup, winning the World Cup. But it seems like everyone's already proclaiming Brazil is going to win their sixth Cup, you know, this year. Um, with they are the odds-on favorite to win it. The World Cup is in Russia, if many of you don't know. Uh, they start in June. I'll be very excited to see what's going to happen. <laughs> Steve, Mou- Man- Steve Mushi is mentioning Viva Argentina. Yeah, well, they have uh, Messi, so they are. Messi is part of Argentina. But you know what? Brazil, everyone's proclaiming them to win it um, for their sixth World Cup. So, you know, oh, let's, let's, talk about, let's talk about this World Cup, okay? Well, they're saying, yeah, Steve, Neymar is hurt. Um, if, they, if they can focus around that, you know, as a team and come together, Neymar is their Messi of Brazil. So what's going to happen, you know, you know, even with Neymar hurt, they're still proclaiming them the World Cup winners. So, you know, who's to say? But kind of let me go back again and talk about Italy really quick. Here's a team that I love, you know, that's my favorite team, that I've been following since, you know, 82 when they won it uh, as far as I know they've been they've been in the World Cup every year not to make it to the World Cup this year is like a slap in the face of Italy because and you kind of wonder what's going on is it political is it corruption in Italy or is it their coach you know they're, they're you know it's it's almost like saying you know not having the Chicago Blackhawks in the NHL playoffs is not having Italy in the World Cup is beyond like it, it's shocking to a lot of people so we'll, we'll see I, I'm I'm, I'm sad. I'm going to watch the World Cup, but, you know, I'm going to have to cheer for the next team that I kind of like as Germany. You know, I, I like them a lot. You know, Messi plays for Argentina. I'm not an Argentina fan, but I know a lot of people. Steve, I know you're an Argentina fan. Um, and so is uh, 
Albert. So what's your predictions? What do you guys think? Do you guys think it's going to be Argentina winning the World Cup? It's going to be pretty interesting. And, you know, will there be a surprise coming out of the, the, uh, the rounds, the, like the preliminary rounds, who's going to advance? There's some weak divisions out there. I mean, I saw Iran in there. I saw some, like Morocco. Obviously, these Middle Eastern teams somehow make it. But is there going to be a surprise team from there that we're, we don't know, we're not, you know, we don't talk about, aside from what we're mentioning? Will be there be a surprise team? Who's to say? Uh, and that's the fun part of the World Cup. You know, you always want to cheer for those underdogs to kind of make it. A lot of people don't want to see the consistency of the same teams making the playoffs. Like, you know, we see in the NBA, too. They want to see different teams, but... You know, for the hardcore fans, you know, who's to say? Yeah, Portugal. Um, Portugal could be a surprise team, but, you know, I call that one player they have, and we all know who it is, a crybaby, because I feel like, you know, he takes dives in the middle of the penalty box, trips himself, and, and, and uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, I'm sorry, is who I want to mention. Cristiano Ronaldo, lately I've seen him play, and there was a footage I've seen where he tripped over him, himself, and was yelling like a baby. I mean, the highlights clearly show you're tripping over yourself. So, and I know this is common in soccer. It's one thing why I, I you know, to me, I look at soccer players. I'm like, really, get up. You know, it's like you, you make it so obvious you want to, well, you want to, you want a penalty, but you know, you're not hurt. And I think you know, a lot of times these referees are starting to call it on the other players because it's becoming a nuisance for for them the way they lay on the floor like they broke their leg. Sam, okay, Sam Sahara, thank you so much for tuning in. Sam says, well, Germany w will win it all. You know, I'm, I'm agreeing. I'm, you know, Italy is my favorite team, but when they're out, you know, Germany is the next team that I cheer for. Why? Because I have family in Germany, and I've always liked Germany uh, since, you know, Klingsman, you know, back in the 90s when they won it. Uh, he's still top three score. Steve says he's still top three in score. Nobody will come close to him and Messi. That's where, that's where all the NBA players have flipped now. <laughs> that is very true. That's very true. Yeah, they are flopping. Um, it's going to be interesting. Uh, Germany is another powerhouse. Um, they won it. Did they win it last World Cup? I can't recall. I believe Germany won it the last World Cup. So they should be the odds-on favorite. You know, I don't know why Brazil did. Yes, Albert, they do flop in the NBA. So it's, it's kind of funny. But you know what? That's what kills me about the FIFA. It's like, you know... They sit there like, you know, they're about to die on the grass. You know, it's, it's <laughs> you just got, you know, you got slit, slit, it was a slide tackle. And they're flopping around like they, they're about to die. And as soon as they see, you know, the play move on, they got up and sprint off the, off the field. It, it's ridiculous. It's they're like prima donnas. You know, you're making millions out there. Play the game. Um, but, it, you know, I'm interested to see what's going to happen. Uh, again, I kind of want to see some of these teams that nobody knows about, and not even Portugal. Portugal kind of advances. I want to see the teams that are like a Middle Eastern team advance. Like it, it would be interesting to see Iran advance or a team. You know, I'd love, I would have loved to see Iraq, our own country, make it. But, you know, with all the sanctions that have been in it before, you know, it's unfortunate. Germany blew, okay, Albert Montero is saying Germany blew out Brazil 7-1, to one, I believe. Yeah. They did blow them out. Uh, Germany is still, in my opinion, should be the odds-on favorite because usually it's usually that way in, in any sport. When, when they win, let's say they win the Stanley Cup, that team is the odds-on favorite to repeat unless any dramatic thing happens. Same thing in the NBA, same thing in, in MLB. It's the odds-on favorite. So who, who's to say? Steve, are you serious? He's saying, Steve is saying, Steve Mushi goes, watch out for Egypt. <laughs> Egypt, that, that'll be interesting, Steve. That will be really interesting. Um, I, I don't, I mean, I don't know who's who's for Egypt, but uh, you know, it, you know, I don't mind. Honestly, I don't mind because hey, look at Loyola. You know, Loyola and the NCAA make it that far. Um, why not have a team like Egypt or <laughs> what other teams are out there? I, I just don't want these like South Korea, Japan. I don't want those kind of teams. I just want some Middle Eastern teams to make it far. You know, and I want to ask my producer. Uh, I don't know, what, what, what's your favorite soccer? Like, who do you want out there? Iraq. Iraq. Well, they're not even in the World Cup. So what's going to happen, you know? Uh, Germany, Germany, you know, I mean, yeah, Germany's odds on favorite. Yeah, Colombia will also be good. Colombia is usually good unless they, you know, one of their own players starts scoring for themselves and 
he got shot. Who, who, who recalls that in 1994, the World Cup? And I believe that was in, in, in Chicago they played when it was in the U.S. Colombian players scored against them. Their, their, um, their Colombian players scored on their own net, okay? And what happened was when they got eliminated, that player unfortunately got assassinated. He was shot uh, coming out of, of, out of a club. He plays for, okay, Mohamed Salia. He's really good. Cristiano wants him on Real Madrid. He plays for Egypt. Well, that's fine, and, that's fine and great, Steve, but you know what? Sometimes one player can't do the whole, I mean, especially in Egypt, you know, when you got one player who's phenomenal, but then you got a bunch of other players who do, can't do anything, you know, who's to say they're going to be that good? You know, you still have to have the chemistry. We'll see. Well, I mean, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be something worth watching. I can't wait. Um, I don't know what the time difference is going to be from Russia to, to our time. It's probably going to be midnight. They're playing or 10 o'clock. I think it's an eight-hour difference, if I'm not mistaken. We have an Assyrian player. Steve is saying we have an Assyrian player that plays for Iraq. Yeah, but Iraq's not in the World Cup, are they? No. Iraq's not even in the World Cup, so it's like that, that defeats the purpose. Justin Marami. Justin Marami. That's their player. Yeah, but, you know, it's unfortunate. They're not, they're not playing in the World Cup, so hopefully next four years. Who's to say, you know, if they build their team? Why not have them? Um, so, you know, I'm, in, I'm excited. You know, it is every four years. I'm very excited. No, they're not. Yeah, they're not. Uh, Sam Sarkis saying they're not in the World Cup. I know. Same thing. My producer's on right now. Same thing. <laughs> so what do you guys want to talk about? I mean, we have the World Cup going on. Should we go talk about the NBA again? Or even, any, you know, NHL, and NFL, it's open mic, guys. Tell me what you guys want to talk about. We're not going to keep the show on for longer because um, we are in a time crunch. Um, you, know, you know, continue the World Cup. I, I, do want the, I do want Germany. Football. Well, Albert, what do you want to talk about? I just discussed Trevor Davis, uh, going back to Trevor Davis. You know, Green Bay, very stupid, stupid player, in my opinion. Um, you know, I've seen dumb acts out there before with players. This kind of puts, you know, Odell Beckham's situation to shame. How, who yells bomb in the airport? Seriously, guys, who yells bomb in the airport? <laughs> I mean, has Green Bay released his player right now? Conor McGregor. Steve, you know what? That's actually a great topic. I don't have any highlights on that. But Conor McGregor actually brings up a good point, Steve. Um, we saw the incident with Conor McGregor. Um, where he started throwing chairs, name it, uh, you know, chairs, anything on, on the bus. You know, what are you doing? He's trying to get the attention of, of, of an MMA fighter that was going to fight Saturday. What are you doing? And this guy, okay, Conor McGregor, I believe he, the hype got to his head or something. Conor, what, what are you thinking? Here's another guy I want to blow the whistle on. What are you thinking throwing stuff at a bus? And you have his entourage chasing him and trying to stop him. And he's acting like a, an idiot. You know, one of, the, one of these guys who was on the bus got cut because the glass broke from the bus, okay? Now you're wondering, what's the uh, UFC going to do with this guy? Did they suspend him? They should suspend him. They should arrest him. If, if I'm not mistaken, isn't Conor McGregor on a visa? I mean, do you not, why don't you deport this guy? I, honestly, make a, make, make, UFC should make a, like, like a, a Make it known to you know you can't do these acts off off the off the uh, the octagon. What are you doing? You know you do this stuff. You you're going inside in the ring. That's one thing. But when you're doing it in a in a parking lot, is ridiculous. Let's see. Is it, we're discussing how Ronaldo is better than Messi. It was stage. Ramson George, are you talking about which was stage? The UFC. You know what? I kind of was wondering that. But you know, it, but this guy got hurt. Is UFC, you know, I honestly, Steve, uh, Ramson, uh, Ramson George, Ramson George has brought up a good point. Uh, he goes, he says right now that it was staged. You know what, in this day and age with social media, with popularity, it could have possibly been a stage. You know, you're trying to get ratings on your show, trying to get this maybe fight going on with Conor McGregor. And I don't even know, who was the other guy that he, he was trying to fight? Alibi, Abibi, whatever his name is. Steve, if you can uh, kind of tell me right now. Because I, I lost touch of who he's trying to get to. I know we were discussing this. It was some Arab fighter. I believe, and Ramson brings up a great point, like he had mentioned, 
they may be these, you know, they're trying to stage this together. So it hypes and hypens it up to where the fight now goes forward. Like, who remembers wrestling, WWF in 1980s? Okay, in 1980s, they would always have this backstage brawl, and, and they, would, you know, it would, they would interview this person, interview that person, you know, hype this up to become a WrestleMania event. So who's to say UFC is not trying to do the same concept? You know, trying to get these people's attention to start talking about it. Hey, these are the next two play fighters we want to go up against. It, it, it's not a, it's, you know, it's a valid point, Ramson. You, you, brought, you bring up a great point. Um, Albert saying it's not staged. Dana White came on ESPN saying that he's not backing McGregor with anything. Yeah, you know what? We don't know that, Albert. You know, I thought the same thing. This guy got cut on the bus, okay? He got tore up on the head. He's bleeding. Some guy comes into the locker room and is saying he's going to get uh, arrested. I think it was uh, the other guy. What was his name? Habibi. Thank you, Steve Mushi. Habibi was the other player or fighter who's going to fight Saturday. So, yeah, but my point is, and, and to Ramson's point, how do we know that they're not trying to get these guys to battle each other? You know, Habibi's going to retaliate now. He said, Why don't you? and his own words was like, you know what, tell me. Habibi said, call me, okay, tell me where and when, and I'll meet you there. Okay, you tell me that they're not trying to make this fight come together. You, I see, I do smell UFC kind of behind this all, oh, you know. So it'll be, you know, it's something to kind of look forward to. Albert Montero is saying they're pressing assault charges on McGregor. Okay, I mean, I see what you're saying, Albert, but you know what? Even in politics now, you know, the President Trump is tweeting things out left and right. And, you, know, you know, it's like we, you don't know what to believe anymore. Honestly, with social media, you don't know what to believe in, anymore. They're pressing assault charges. Again, it's just something that could say, hey, you're trying to get everyone's attention. Oh, my God, oh, my God, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? I, you know, who's saying in six months they're not in the ring fighting each other? And who wins after all this? UFC wins. Why? Because they got everyone's attention. Isn't that part of what people want to do is ratings? He's a bad boy. Steve, who are you talking about who's a bad boy? Okay, Sam Sahara is, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. Sam is saying, to make it real, someone has to get hurt or make it look real. Well, someone did get cut in the bus. The bus is glass. I saw the, okay, I saw the footage on this. Uh, Steve Mushi showed me the footage on this where, if you haven't seen it, it was actually a great footage where McGregor threw something on the bus. It tore up the glass, and you see a cut mark on that, on that, on that person. One of the, I think it was one of the fighters. His forehead was cut. So Connor wants no part of him. Well, you know, we don't, Steve, we don't know that yet. I mean, it could be something, you know, he, they want no part of each other. This is the buildup is what I'm saying. This is the buildup. You know, I, again, I, I, you know, I see what you're saying. I do believe, that, you know, would there be charges? I don't know. Like, what's, what's to believe, what's not to believe? You know, but going to Remsen, Basnaya, George, he brought up a really good point because I kind of thought about it too. You know, well, you don't know what to believe anymore. You know, this is something that you want to kind of go with and as you have seen saying, okay, you know, we had Conor McGregor fight, uh, who was that one player? May uh, Mayweather. Was it Mayweather? They fought with each other. That brought a big, huge ratings. And it's like, okay, what's the next step we can do to, to bring up the ratings again? I wouldn't put it past the mind of UFC because I, in, in, in one way, do they have story writers like wrestling does? WWF, WCW always had story writers. And every time that show sold out, it was always a talk of the town. Oh, this guy's going to fight this guy. Oh, oh, you know, when NWO came around, oh, oh Hogan joined the NWO. There was always something, you know, so we'll see. But uh, I kind of, you know, I don't know what to believe. I'll be honest with you. I don't know what to believe. It'll be interesting to see what's going to happen from this. But, you know, is it going to be something that, you know, is real where they ban him from UFC? And if it is, then, hey, you know what? He deserves it. He's on the visas from what I heard. Deport him. If that's what happened, if it was legitimately, you know, they're going to ban him, then, 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 you know, deport him if he's on a visa. I, don't, I, I personally can't stand him, McGregor, because I feel like, you know, it got to his head. He's, you know, everyone's talking about him after that Mayweather fight. Ban him. So um, let's go back really quick to the NHL, um, show you the NHL playoffs, playoff picture. So what's going to happen now with the NHL, the playoffs is right around the corner. It's starting, um, I believe, within a week. 
you got the Tampa Bay Lightning versus the New Jersey, New Jersey Devils. Um, from these two teams, I'm going to start talking about it, where it's, you got the Tampa Bay Lightning going up against the New Jersey Devils. Um, from these two teams, I think Tampa Bay is a bit more um, rounded team. Uh, they are a better team. I believe Tampa Bay wins this round. They beat New Jersey. I would probably say in six games they move on um, to the to – the, they, they beat New Jersey and move on in six games. Then you have Boston Bruins playing the Toronto Maple Leafs. Um, that's going to be a very tough matchup because I think these two teams, a um, few years back, it went seven games. Uh, Toronto was uh, the odds-on favorite, uh, and they came back. Toronto was winning it 3-1, to one, and Boston came back and beat them. Um, in four games after that, Boston, it was, it was a tremendous game. This is actually in 2013 uh, when the Chicago Blackhawks beat Boston. That's the year that Boston uh, made a miraculous comeback against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Um, I believe uh, Boston beats Toronto, moves on off of this one. So going on, uh, Washington right now, the Washington Capitals versus the Columbus Blue Jackets. Um, Washington should easily win this uh, win this series. Columbus is a great team, but you know what? Washington. Here's here's what I'm going to say with this team. Every year, Washington is the odds-on favorite to win the Stanley Cup. You know they they got a phenomenal team in Washington. They got a great player of in Ovechkin. What lacks in that team, I believe, is a true leadership. They are missing uh, that leadership, like Taves. Um, and Crosby, I never saw, uh, uh, you know, Washington as, as a team that has that leadership in Ovechkin. He, I feel like he is more of a scoring threat. He, I never seen him as a leader. And it, it, could it be that way why they keep losing in, in the playoffs? You know, because they choke. They're a team. They're like the paper champs, but they choke in the playoffs. But this could be the year because if they can beat Columbus, they should easily beat Columbus. There's not much threat out there. Watch, you know, Chicago's out of it. So this is the year. If, if Washington doesn't make it, they are going to fire, I believe, Barry Trotz. And Ovechkin's got to decide, the Washington Capitals organization's got to decide, what do you do with this player? You know, you have a lot of players on this team, which they're going to be coming with, their contract's going to be due. What do you do? You have a lot of players on it with a huge payroll. So that's going to be an interesting matchup to watch. It's going to be interesting following Washington, because I'm going to follow that team very, very tight-knit. The next team or uh, matchup, I want to say, again, I said I want to say Washington beats them, beats Columbus, and moves on. Col we're going to see the Pittsburgh Penguins playing the Philadelphia Flyers. I don't want to see Pittsburgh win another cup. Um, I'm just not a fan of Pittsburgh. Do they have the talent? They obviously do. I don't want to see Crosby win another cup. Uh, I, I just, it's one of those things where it's like, I, you know, I'm a diehard, hardcore Hawks fan. Uh, do they have the talent? They do. But they, I believe they do beat the Philadelphia Flyers, uh, but I don't want them to uh, win that cup. So hopefully Pittsburgh gets knocked out by Philly, but I don't see that happening. Uh, Sarge Mulkey, thank you for tuning in. Sarge saying bring him to the Hawks. Who are you talking about, Sarge? Ovechkin? I thought about that, Sarge, on um, Ovechkin to the Hawks, but it's, he's, he, he's got another uh, two to three years left on the contract at $13 million. That's a heavy load contract um, to bring in. Even though the Blackhawks do, Sarge, they do have the cash and the assets to do it this year. Um, again, with Sharp retiring. And I do believe they buy off oh, um, Marion Hosa. I don't think he's coming back because what Stan uh, Bowman said is his condition hasn't changed. It's still the same. They, they should buy him out. That frees up $12 million right there. You know what, Sarge, uh, if you didn't tune in earlier, what I was thinking is – the players you want to bring in, in my opinion, who would benefit more is the Sedins. All right, Daniel Hendrick Sedin. If you can talk about a retirement, I think we have a better chance of going further with those two players with their skills. I mean, these guys are like two canes put together, the way they pass with each. Their passing together is they know where they're going to be on the ice at all at every second of the time. So you imagine these two, Daniel Hendrick Sedin, Playing in the front in the first line with with Jonathan Taves, they would be <laughs> that first line would be phenomenal. One of the top lines. I want the Sedins honestly with the Hawks. If you can talk them out of the retirement, bring them with Chicago. It's worth every penny. And these two don't go to any other team unless they're together. So it's 
it's kind of a buy one, get one free package. So take, if you can bring him out of the retirement, it would be great. Ovechkin would be worth, I mean, Ovechkin is great. He's a great scoring threat. But honestly, I, I think I would want the Sedins uh, in Chicago. I mean, imagine them in a hot sweater. So, yeah, um, Ovechkin would be great. I thought about that too. But then it's like, how do you, if, if Washington doesn't win the cup, yes, it, it's a, it, it's, it might happen. I mean, he might say, I want to opt out and to go to a contending team. I'm not saying that Washington's not a contending team, but do you take Ovechkin uh, and bring him to the Chicago Blackhawks? There's going to be some conditions with that. I mean, what, what is he going to say? What, what line do you put him in? You know, do um, you put him in Taves' line? Do you put him in Caves' line? I think Kane, um, already with Hannah Stroza and, and Schmaltz, that line's already set. Now, what you want to do is revive Taves. He is hurting. There's something wrong with him. He hasn't been the same since, I, honestly, not even before they, they won the Cup in 2015. I think something happened to him right when he got hurt hit, uh, against the Sharks. Uh, Thornton hit him. This was in 2013. I remember he got through a major concussion. Something went wrong with him after that. So it's going to be vital the Hawks make some moves this year because if not, they brought back Quinville and Stan Bowman for another year to prove themselves. This year, you can't do anything about it. It is what it is. But they also need to sign a great backup goaltender. You can't rely on what we have right now as backups. Crawford, what's going to happen next year? You know, do we say, hey, you know, he's going to clear up? He's going to be on the right path? What's going to happen? You, we need to go out there and sign a great goaltender. And there's a few of them out there. Um, Miller. Okay, Miller is a good backup to bring in if something happens to Ryan Miller is what I'm talking about. Great backup to bring up to, for Crawford if he wants to um, have some of that depth. Defense, I'm not worried about because if you can bring some of that scoring, defense will be there. We, we, we couldn't start. We, the first few weeks of the season when they started playing, they were phenomenal. Okay, we were scoring like crazy. And then, then you know, if you, if you can't score, okay, our defense is going to be shot because we're going to be consistently trying to defend. It's not going to happen. We need to go back to that two-way game. The offensive skill. If we can keep the puck in our possession, the defense can rest. He'll retire as a capital. Albert, you mentioned uh, Ovechkin will retire as a capital. I highly doubt it. I'll be honest with you why I think I highly doubt it. He wants to win a cup. It's not about scoring. You can score as much as you want. He is going to want a cup. If they're not going to do it this year, he's going to walk. Uh, you know, either he says he might opt out of his contract, you know, because I believe there's. I don't think he has got a no trade clause, so I, I don't know. I have to kind of look into that. We also need an enforcer. Okay, so Sarge saying we also need an enforcer, Sarge Melky, to win and, and protect our young stars. Yeah, we do, but keep in mind the three cups we won, it wasn't about enforcing, it was about finesse and skill. Finesse, skill, and speed. Um, granted, we had the right players at that time. Um, to me, speed and it, speed is what you need. These guys are getting older. So Taves and Kane, it's odd to say, you know, I look at these guys when they came in and say these guys are getting old. It's really funny to say now because they don't look it. But speed, skill, and finesse beats enforcing teams any day. When we played Boston in the Stanley Cup, they were more of the enforcer team. Who won that? We did. When we, paid, when we played Philly in 2010, sorry, John. Sorry, Monkey, I'm sorry. When we played uh, Philly in 2010, who, was the, who were the goons? Philly were. They were the beating, they were the bullies of Philly. But who won the cup? We did because we had speed and skill. With the exception of 2015 when we beat Tampa Bay, they were a great team, but Tampa Bay should have never been in the Stanley Cup. I believe that was the easiest cup to win. So it's going to be an uh, interesting offseason with the Blackhawks. So other than that, guys, um, I want to say uh, that kind of sums up everything for today. Thank you so much. I want to thank my producer so much for uh, putting on the show tonight, bringing us live on for the show. Um, again, we'll try to have Steve, um, I guess Steve Mushi. Uh, again, he was under the weather. Uh, hope you feel better, buddy. I'll have you on next Monday. Again, I'd like to thank my producers. Uh, again, my sponsor, thank you so much for my sponsor, Jay Thomas Painting. Uh, we greatly appreciate it. Guys, if you're looking for a great painter, Jay Thomas Painting, he does phenomenal work with painting around the house, what have you, and does great dry, drywall work. Um, contact him. The number will be listed again after I end the show. Other than that, have a great night, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to After the Whistle. Good night.
Can you blow my whistle, baby? Whistle, baby, let me know. Girl, I'm gonna show you how to do it, and we start real slow. You just put 